Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lighthouse Morning Service. We hope you've been blessed with the services so far, and it's great to continue meeting together online. I pray you're blessed this morning as well. We're just going to begin our service with praising God, with singing to God the song, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. song. Uh, praise God for these songs that we can sing to him and worship him. We're going to continue our service. Um, I, I'm going to pray, but before I pray, we have some of our young people from our church that are going to do our prayer drill for us. That's Empress, Joshua and David. So here they go. One, two, three. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for this morning, Lord, this new day. 
Uh, we thank you, Lord, that we've been able to meet together online, to hear your word, and to praise you together. Father, we thank you for this technology, that we've been able to keep in contact with each other. We pray you'd continue to bless us in our family homes, Lord. We pray for those who are um, not able to work at the moment. And, and this is a really tough time, Lord. We pray you'd continue to comfort us. We pray for those who've lost loved ones uh, or whose loved ones are ill. Lord, we pray for your comfort, for your strength, for your encouragement. We pray for your healing, Lord. So, Father, we also pray for your word being shared with us this morning. We pray you'd speak to us through your word. Give us ears to hear you, Lord, and eyes to see you, and hearts to be softened and open to what you have to say to us. We pray, Father, that you would bless us, Lord. Draw us closer to you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. So another welcome to anybody who's just joined us. Uh, we're going to have our service this morning with Matthew Lawrence and speaking on uh, Act 16. He's going to continue with the theme of freedom, the freedom in the gospel, how Christ can set us free from anything in our lives. But also, Matthew's going to remind us from God's word that the Christian life is a battle, and it should not surprise us that just because we become Christians, it doesn't make our lives easy. And so we pray that encourages um, all of us who hear it this morning we're also going to hear from Kev, which would be a great encouragement, how God has worked in his life and turned his life around. And we pray that that would encourage each of us to continue in our walk with the Lord or to come to the Lord for the first time. I just want to remind you also that uh, if you want prayer uh, for anything, please click the prayer button on your, on your screen. And someone will be available to pray for you. And it will be totally anonymous. No one, uh, no one else will see it. It will just be the, one of the prayer team. Um, but they, they will be available to pray for you and pray with you. We're going to sing some kids' songs just now. The first one is a classic. It's Our God is a Great Big God. The second one, you might not know, but it's uh, Alive by a Hillsong. And uh, it's about this theme as well, how God frees us from the death and sin, how he makes us alive by his spirit and gives us new life, life to the full. So we pray you are encouraged. We pray that you would be blessed by these songs and get on your feet and enjoy praising God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God.
hope you enjoyed those songs. I hope they lifted your spirits and encouraged you this morning. Uh, we're going to have our message, but just before the, the message this morning, we're going to do our Bible reading. And uh, the person reading the scripture this morning will be one of our Illuminate group, and that's Ellie. And she'll be reading Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 23. So if you have a Bible, you can read along. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, there should be the passage on the screen. One thing I also wanted to say is if you don't have a Bible and you would like one, please contact any of us here at the Lighthouse, John or Matthew or anybody else you know linked with the Lighthouse, and we will get a Bible to you one way or another, just to bless you with God's Word. So Ellie will be up next reading verses 16 to 23 from chapter 16 of Acts. One day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money from for her masters by telling fortune. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly it left. Her master's hope of wealth are were now shattered, so they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in uproar because of these Jews, they shouted at the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure that they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Hi there, it's uh, great to see you back again this week. And uh, today, um, as we continue in our series in Acts, um, I hope that this is a blessing and an encouragement to you as we continue this really high drama passage um, as Paul and Silas continue their journey, um, preaching the word and seeing people transformed and also coming into some um, opposition as a result. I wonder if, like me, you've ever experienced what it's like to be flying high, having lots of momentum in life, then all of a sudden being stopped dead in your tracks. I'm sure you've had that experience um, if you've lived any significant length of time. Um, that is exactly what happens today in our passage for Paul and Silas, our main characters, as they continue to go to the people and to preach the good news of Jesus in Philippi. It seems like they're on fire. They're having so much momentum. They've seen Lydia's life transformed, as we heard about last week. Her whole household was baptised. Today, as Ellie just read to us, this demon-possessed slave girl, her life is transformed. She's set free. It seems like they're on fire. Then wham, they're stopped in their tracks and they're thrown in jail. We can identify with this, can't we? I mean, it only seems like just a few weeks ago, um, Rebecca and I and the kids took two weeks to have a holiday. And when we, we went on holiday, everything seemed to be going really well. There was nothing to worry about. We set off. Coronavirus was just a a thing that was going on somewhere else. And by week two of our holiday, we were in lockdown. And by the time we got home, this whole country was in lockdown. And everything had been turned on its head. Everything had stopped. And all of a sudden, jobs were at threat. Health was at threat. And everything seemed to have gone wrong. That can happen to all of us. And maybe that's how you feel today. Maybe you feel like you were flying high. Maybe you feel like everything was going smoothly. Like you were in the fast lane of life. Like everything was going well. And suddenly, in the blink of an eye, everything has been put on hold. Weddings, birthdays, family gatherings, socials, football games, Sundays at Lighthouse in the community campus, groups, school, the list goes on. All of it has been stopped. And sometimes it can feel like maybe momentum has stopped. How do we deal with it when the rug has been pulled from under our feet? 
when things and circumstances appear to start going against us. And sometimes we all have to admit it can feel like the bad guys are winning. It can feel like the, the evil powers are winning the day. I wonder if that's how you feel in your life right now. Maybe you feel like all the good things are on hold. And where is God anyway? Where is God when all these bad things are happening? Maybe your friends and your family who are showing some interest have now decided to turn away and are now asking questions like, well, how, if God's so good, how would he let all of this happen? And you're having to listen to all these questions and, and you're feeling all this frustration. Well, today, I hope we're going to find some answers to those questions. Some answers to that frustration. And we're going to find those answers in the passage that Ellie read to us earlier. We come to this amazing passage and we enter the story just as Paul and Silas are riding high. They're on the crest of a wave. They've just arrived in Philippi at the city that was a jewel in the crown of the Roman Empire. And they've been having huge success with preaching the good news of Jesus. As I said last week, Lydia came to faith and her whole household were baptised. This sophisticated woman was baptised right outside the city wall in the river. What an amazing result. And they carried on their preachers into the verses that Ellie read for us just now. In fact, it tells us that they went back to the place of prayer every day. They were encouraged by the results they'd had and they thought they would carry on. That was their model. That was the way they did it. They went to where the Jews were and they preached the gospel and waited to see how God would work. But in our passage today, they get an unwanted follower. They get some frustrating company. Paul and Silas were trying to engage with the people. They were trying to preach to the crowds. But all of a sudden, we read in our passage that this demon-possessed slave girl starts following them. And this girl, she has powers to tell the future. She was someone that people would probably have gone to, to, to try and figure out where their lives were going. But she was clearly disturbed. And she starts screaming at the top of her lungs, Look everyone, these men are servants of the Most High God and they've come to tell you how to be saved. Now, we hear and we read in our passage that this wasn't a one-off. This girl didn't just show up one day and shout that out loud and then go away again. No, she did it day after day after day and this disturbed girl is screaming at the top of her lungs and no doubt it must have scattered the crowds that Paul and Silas had gathered and they must have been so frustrated. You can imagine Paul just drawing breath and starting to preach to the crowd when this wild young woman starts screaming in the background and everybody gets freaked out and, and goes home. And you can just imagine day after day Paul trying to preach to the crowds but this girl just screams and screams, this man is servant of the Most High God. I don't think she was the kind of master of ceremonies that Paul was looking for. She, you know, he wouldn't have picked her to be in the lineup to introduce him to speak because she was clearly disturbed. And it says in our passage that this happened day after day after day. To the point where Paul gets completely exasperated. So what do you and I do when we get exasperated? We cut to the chase, don't we? We tend to do something about it and Paul is no different. Paul stops trying to politely ignore this young woman and he shouts at this demon who has possessed the girl. He says, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And instantly the demon leaves. Talk about results. This is amazing. We've already seen Lydia give her life 
to Christ. But now Paul has demanded that this demon come out of this girl and it comes out like that. She's set free from her demons and her masters who have been using her to make money, to, to earn a fortune, have their hopes shattered. Their economic future is taken away. Their star attraction is gone. Paul and Silas are having huge momentum. And it seems like nothing can get in their way. I don't know if you've ever felt like that when you're riding high. And it feels like nothing can get in your way. Not even the power of Satan displayed in this fortune-telling slave girl can stop their progress. But the opposition doesn't stop. The enemy won't stop there. The fight against the move of God and, and, and through Paul and Silas doesn't let up. In fact, the opposition gets worse as we go through this high drama passage. You would have heard at the end of Ellie's reading that the owners of the slave girl, they whip up a mob who demand that Paul and Silas be jailed because of what they've done. Really? The slave girl's owners were just angry because they'd lost money. But they managed to convince the mob and through the mob the city officials to have Paul and Silas stripped and beaten with wooden rods. And they're handed over to a jailer who throws them in prison. But he doesn't just put them in any old prison cell. He doesn't just put them in the normal wing of the prison. No, he, he puts them in the most secure part of the prison, in the inner dungeon. And they have their feet clamped in stocks. What a high drama passage this is. It seems like Paul and Silas are unstoppable. It seems like their momentum is just taking them everywhere and anywhere that they want to go. And then all of a sudden, wham, they're stopped in their tracks. And they're in the inner dungeon with stocks on their feet. So what can you and I take away from this high drama part of the story of Acts. I think there's two themes that run through this passage and, and actually run right through each of our lives if, if we're Christians here this morning. And we need to think about both these themes as we come away from our time together. Two themes I want us to think about. And the first of those is momentum. Momentum. When you become a Christian, when you enter into the life that God has designed for all of mankind, when you begin to live as God intended, you enter into a movement that has huge momentum. Now, what does momentum mean? Momentum means having energy, a bit like a, a huge freight train that builds up speed as it hurtles down the tracks. It is really hard to stop. And that's what God's kingdom is like. In fact, God's kingdom is unstoppable. When we enter God's kingdom, it places us on that freight train of God's salvation plan for the world. And it's got unstoppable momentum. It's like a huge space rocket or a massive jumbo jet airplane going down a runway, building up speed. And when you or I enter into that life that God has prepared for us, Nothing can slow God down. Nothing, not even the killing of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ on a cross, could stop God's plan of salvation. In fact, it was part of his plan for salvation that Jesus would die because he was bearing the sins of the world. And of course, as we know and celebrated a few weeks ago, he rose from the dead. But the evil powers at work could not stop God's momentum. Maybe you feel sometimes like life as a Christian is, is really hard and, and it feels like you're, you're pushing a boulder up a hill. That's how you feel in your Christian life. Well, I want to remind you this morning that that is not what the Christian life is like. In fact, as a Christian, the momentum of God's kingdom is unstoppable. It's like a huge boulder running down a hill. We're told that God will bring to completion the work that he started in us by his power and by his strength. The Christian life is a life of unstoppable momentum. 
You can see it in the life of Paul and Silas. You can see it in our passage today. They're joining in with God's mission to the nations and things are happening one after the other. Bang, bang, bang. People are being saved by the power of Jesus. Lives are being transformed. Lydia is converted. Her whole household are baptised. A slave girl in our passage is set free from horrific demon possession. And the momentum is building and growing. And the people watching on are thinking, wow, what is going on here? Have you ever felt that sense of momentum of God's kingdom? as it expands and grows and people's lives are transformed. We've seen it in our community here, haven't we? As the kingdom of God keeps building, as people are transformed by the amazing love of God and by his power. It's really encouraging, isn't it? It's almost addictive to be involved with. I know myself that I love to look around and think, God, what are you going to do in this person's life? Praying for people. And then seeing them come to faith is just the most encouraging thing. Seeing people being released from addiction, having their lives given given new purpose in Jesus Christ. You can feel the momentum. And we need to remember that it's not because of anything we do. It's not because of our gifts. The momentum that Paul and Silas experienced wasn't because of their ability or anything special about them but it was because of the power of God at work through the good news of Jesus Christ. So we have this theme of momentum that runs through the life of every Christian and it runs through the passage today. But there's a second theme that that almost balances or it's a bit of a reality check for us and it's the theme of opposition. You see, we learn time and time again in the Bible that wherever the kingdom of God is moving forward with this unstoppable momentum, the kingdom of darkness is always trying in vain to stop it. And we see that in our high drama passage today, don't we? Paul and Silas are riding the freight train of God's kingdom momentum and then all of a sudden they're stripped and beaten and thrown into prison. And, you know, it could be easy for us in these moments to think when the momentum appears to have been lost, that something's gone wrong. When we start to feel discouraged, when we think that God is not answering our prayers, when we see someone walk away from from seeking God, when we ourselves have our faith challenged because life has just got harder all of a sudden. It happens, doesn't it? And I'm sure it's maybe happening for you right now. But we need to remember that being a Christian isn't just a story of momentum. It's also about expecting and experiencing opposition. These two things will be present side by side in our lives as Christians. That's what we can take away from our passage today. We need to hold both these things in tension. When we're tempted to despair at the opposition we face in our lives, at the discouragement and maybe the doubt that we experience, we need to remind ourselves that God is in control. That as the characters in Narnia used to say to one another when the world was covered in ice and Narnia seemed to be in the grip of the opposition ruler, the White Witch, they would remind each other and say, remember though, Aslan is on the move. And Aslan, of course, C.S. Lewis used to represent God himself, Jesus Christ. And when he moves, his momentum is unstoppable. Yes, of course, the forces of darkness will oppose it, but they are already beaten So that means that the opposition you and I face, the mockery, the jokes, the sarcasm, and for some people the persecution, all of that opposition is being carried out by an enemy that is already defeated. That's how Paul could cast out the demons who opposed him because he was relying on the power 
of Jesus Christ and the victory that had been won through the death and resurrection of Jesus. That's how Kevin, who we're going to hear from later, has been set free from his past life. Freedom to live a new kind of life because of what Jesus has done. So we finish our passage with Paul and Silas in a dungeon and their feet in stocks. What a cold, miserable place that must be. Going from having such huge momentum to being stopped dead in their tracks by opposition, by evil powers at work. So what do they do? Well, I'm not going to steal the thunder from next week's preacher who is going to take us on to the next part of the story. But I'm going to give you a bit of a clue. Paul and Silas don't think, oh, well, oh, well, OK, you know, it's all over. You know, the momentum stops here. Um, God's not quite powerful enough to deal with this one. That's not what they do. But you need to come back next week to find out what happens next. But for this week, I want you to remember these two themes. Firstly, momentum. God's kingdom is breaking in. It's here. He is moving through our community and his momentum is unstoppable. I think some people thought that when the the lockdown happened that that church would become ineffective. I heard that in the first Sunday of lockdown, upwards of 20 million people tuned into a church service in the UK. The momentum hasn't stopped. Just because we can't meet together physically doesn't mean that God and his kingdom aren't moving forward. He is continuing to save people. He's continuing to break into the lives of those who open up their hearts to him. What does his momentum mean for us? Well, why not get on board? Why not get on board with the freight train momentum of God's kingdom? Why not join this exciting, life-transforming movement? that God has begun. You are invited today to be a part of this movement of God in the world. But let's remember too that we still have opposition. Let's remember to expect it. Let's be ready for it. And when we see opposition, let's not give up hope because God is in control. He has a plan. Even when it can seem like all is lost, when all momentum has been brought to a halt, we need to remember that God's kingdom purposes can never be derailed. They can't be stopped. Yes, we will get frustrated. Yes, we may have to wait longer for our prayers to be answered than we would like. But all of that is part of God's plan. He uses opposition to enhance the victory. As we finish, let's imagine what it would look like if all of us, instead of losing hope when it seems like all has gone wrong around us, let's imagine what it would look like if all of us were optimistic. Not just because of some positive thinking or or self-help, but optimistic because we know that God is in control and that he is good and he has a purpose and a plan even for this time in our lives. Imagine what the world around us would think if they look at us, the church, and see a group of people who are so convinced that God is at work, so convinced that God is in control, that his kingdom is expanding, that he is taking ground that they look at us and they think, wow, I wish I had that hope. I wish that I had that assurance, that peace in the midst of a crisis. We need to remember that God is at work, even when we can't feel it. 
And even when we can't see it, we need to remember that one day we will look back and we will see his fingerprints all over our lives if we've walked with him. So let's go forward this week with confidence, not in our own ability, not with our own coping mechanisms, but remembering that the God of momentum is in control. And even when it can seem like life is on hold, even if, if, if you feel right now like you're in that prison cell with your feet in stocks, we need to remember to trust him, the one who does wonderful things right here, right now. And all we need to do is simply trust him with our hearts, open our hearts to him. Give him our hearts. Tell him our discouragements. Share our weaknesses. Be vulnerable with him. And he will draw alongside us. He will bring comfort and peace and assurance. It's only by faith that we can experience true freedom. Even in the midst of opposition. Let's pray together and then after we pray we're going to continue our service by singing who O lord could save themselves let's pray father we come before you this morning and we thank you for this wonderful passage of the bible that shows us in such a dramatic way that you are the God of momentum, that your kingdom is unstoppable, that you are in the business of transforming lives, of setting captives free. We think of that slave girl in our passage who was tormented, who was enslaved, who was held captive by demonic control and also by her, her owners who only wanted to make money from her. Father, we thank you that your power was enough to break her free. And Father, I, I thank you that that same power is available today to set free the captives. Father, we, we thank you that your momentum continues even in the middle of this lockdown, even in the middle of, of all the circumstances which frustrate us. Father, we thank you that your kingdom is going forward. But Father, help us to remember that opposition is part of our Christian experience and we will experience it. And many of us may be ex experiencing it right now. Father, help us to trust you, to remember that the enemy is defeated and help us to, to give our discouragements, our frustrations to you so that we may be reminded that you are in control and that you do all things well. Father, I pray for those who are tuning in today who do not know you yet, who haven't taken that step of, of faith. Lord, I pray that you would work in their hearts, work in all of our hearts to draw us closer to you. And Father, help us to trust you when we're in those dungeon prison moments, when it seems like all is lost, when it seems like everything is been ground to a halt. Father, help us to turn to you and to take this opportunity to seek you with all of our hearts. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together um, the song, Who, O Lord, Could Save Themselves. You are 
Thanks, Matthew, for that message. We're going to have our memory verses from last week, the clips. Uh, we're going to show those in just a second. But before we do that, we've got a memory verse from, from Matthew's message today. And that's Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. So please memorize this verse and send in your clips for next week. So I'll read it through once and then we can repeat it a second time together. So Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Now let's repeat it together a second time. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. So that's the verse for next week. And now up next is the verses, the verse clips from last week. Seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah Hello. chapter Hello. 29 verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah chapter 29, 29 verse, 13. verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13.
thanks again for the memory verse clips and just want to encourage you to send them in next week uh, for the memory verse that Matthew shared with us this morning. Uh, we're now going to hear from Kev the story of how God has worked in his life, how God has transformed his life, has turned his darkness into God's light and uh, given him freedom. We just want to remind everyone listening and for a reminder for myself that God is at work in our lives and we simply need to turn to him in faith. We simply need to walk in obedience to him and he will do stuff in our lives that we could not even imagine. He can take our darkness and turn it into his light. He can take our death and turn it into his life. So we pray you're blessed and uh, thanks Kev for sharing this story. Friends, good morning. Um, I was listening to that talk about uh, the the lady, uh, the lady, and um, it spoke to me today. Uh, it was like uh, she was enslaved by these dark spirits and controlled by these men, and who are using her fortune telling skills for their own ends, for their own profit. You can, and. Uh, no, I was never to, it, it, I was never possessed by by a devilish spirit. However, I do know from years of experience what it's like to be enslaved um, by these evil spirits. There was once that uh, I got involved with uh, cocaine. My friend came into my house and um, had a, had this pipe with him and he says, Kev, take a pipe, it'll change your life. Well, my girlfriend woke up in the morning and she goes, that was a uh, dope that you were smoking last night. That was white, that was uh, cocaine. She says, if that was you, you're smoking that stuff, that's the end. Well, um, to tell you the truth, I lost everything. I lost my family. I lost my daughter. I lost my... I still keep in contact with my daughter. I still look after her, but I lost my house. I lost my... I had a car. A, 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 a rover a, a, and a BMW because I started running for this... Uh, drug dealers and uh, I was making money and lots of money and uh, my girlfriend once said one night she says would you give up all this for drugs half that you have just now I says but money 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 I mean I've got I've got plenty of money I'm 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 loaded I'm kingpin so as the weeks went on I was leaving stuff in the house when I was going out delivering and she was panicking because the police came in and raided the house because the police was passing the door and they were they were like looking in so the kent I was dealing and my girlfriend was left with us uh, packages little wee packages baggies that card uh, little baggies so she's out in the garden hiding them in the muck and under a shady and on top of the shady and funny places but because she was panicking for a. Uh, to hand us drugs in the house, and right enough, I mean, uh, what was I playing at? So, I lost everything, I lost uh, everything through the drugs, and I moved to Aberdeen. And uh, what happened in Aberdeen was, uh, I, I slept her off for ooh, two years maybe, and uh, it was a, a lifestyle of drugs and begging for money and trying to con folk for money and I mean I did that most of my life. I mean that was my lifestyle. It was like, yeah, it was so. It was. A, it's like you're in in a, in a dark room all the time. It's just terrible. But but, but I've always believed in God myself. I've always believed as a child that there's something. I mean, uh, had I been an atheist, I'm a, I mean, I did believe at one time, uh, 
Probably guess. I believe there's something. Well, I believe there was something back then when I was in darkness, but when I, when I moved to Aberdeen, I slept rough for a two year, and um, I woke up one morning, had in my leg, and I'm saying, ah, oh, there's something wrong with my leg. And the throbbing got worse, it was up in my groin, and uh, it was a blockage, an aneurysm, uh, it's called. So uh, I went up to the hospital and they said I was going to lose my leg. And I, well, <laughs> I've lost everything. I mean, I'm losing your leg as well. So um, I lost my leg that night. Woke up in the morning under anaesthetic with uh, stuff pumping into you for, to cut, for the pain. And um, I remember, I remember putting my hand down and feeling, oh, no leg. I mean, it's a nightmare trying to get, to get a boot with one leg, Ken. It's, it's, it's terrible, but God, well, I, I've always thought of something, but it must have been God that was keeping my, uh, keeping my, if it's, a, if it's a word for it, keeping my focused. So, I ended up bumping into uh, Davy Morrison for the city church. Well, he uh, introduced me to uh, city church and I became a helper there, a, 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 a leader. But um, it was great fun. Abdi was, Abdi was just spot on. Davy was... Oh, everybody there was spot on. Great place. Love him up. Miss him. Terribly, because Debbie took me to the lighthouse at, uh, one night, and I met the uh, John Mercer and and, and other boys again, and uh, I met like Shawnee and Shawnee and uh, Ian Proud. I mean, he's a he's a pharmacist. He's, uh, John Fife. I mean, John, uh, awesome guy, awesome guy. Oh, I mean, speak about the gift that helps. I mean, if anybody's got the gift that helps, it's him. He's a he's a top of our block, first class block. There are first class in the lighthouse. That's what I noticed. Uh, especially John. John, like, he cares about you. He really cares about you because, um, uh, when he's preaching, like, he tears it. I mean, a guy's authentic, and he preaches authentic. Well, it was the, I mean, I, I, I scratched my head because I, I really found God that night. Really found him, because something changed that night. It was like, God's real. Uh, there is something there. So I become, I came, what? I mean, I'm, I'm four, six years later, I'm still in the lighthouse, and I'm 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 a leader. I'm 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 on the welcome team. It is uh, people are coming in, and I just love a lighthouse. Um, the uh, the John and the boys made me see that there's a there's a there's a God there, and he, and he's willing to help you. And if you can help me, a man like myself, you can help you. Jesus is real. And as it taxes for you to, to pray to them and say you're sorry for your sins, ask them to forgive you. Your life will change for them. And of course, if you die tonight, you've gone to heaven. There's no question about it. He says that in his, in his word and he isn't a lie. But if we continue in darkness, there's no hope. I mean, I nearly lost, there's only three quarters of me left. But, 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 but God's kept me alive. Thank you, Jesus. So thank you, folks, for listening to me. This is my testimony for the day. And uh, I hope you like it. And I want you to be safe during this lock up. I know it's not nice, but there's going to be an end to it. So, folks, chin up and be brave. Thank you for listening. Thanks for that, Kev. It's very encouraging to hear these stories. It's one of my favourite parts 
of church is to hear individual stories of people's lives being transformed. We've been blessed by hearing the story from Philip a few weeks ago and from Morgan last week and now Kev this day. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing future stories. We are now coming to the end of our service. Uh, just before I pray and close, um, there's some notices to share. And that is, if you are struggling for food in any way, uh, please contact us. We have a food bank available at the Lighthouse. It's open Mondays and Thursdays. The opening time should be at the bottom of your screen along with the contact telephone number. You can also contact us on the Facebook page, the Lighthouse Facebook page as well. So please do that. I just want to remind you one more time that uh, if you want prayer for anything, if during the service you've been reminded of anything you would like prayer for, please click that prayer button. I also want to say that if you're not a Christian today and you've developed an interest in Jesus or the gospel and want to know more about it or you want to give your life to the Lord, please contact us as well on that prayer button and someone will be absolutely delighted um, to speak to you and to pray with you. So I just wanted to let you know about that and I will pray to close and then we'll have a final song. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for how you've spoken to us this morning. We thank you for your word again, Lord, and we thank you that you are clear with us. We pray that by your spirit you would speak to us, Lord, you would bring to life these words and these truths. Lord, I just want to pray for everybody who's struggling, Lord. We're all struggling in different ways and to different degrees. Some people are struggling a lot, Lord, and some people have been through very difficult times. We pray, Father, that you would reveal your power and your comfort to them your compassion, Lord. Reveal yourself, Lord. Show them how good you are and how kind you are. I pray you would strengthen us all, Lord. Keep us safe for this next week and that we'll be able to fellowship again next week together. I want to pray also, Lord, for our nation and for the whole world. Lord, we pray that this coronavirus will be brought to an end by your grace and by your power. We pray, Father, for medical scientists, doctors and nurses. We pray, Father, that this vaccine will be developed quicker than expected. You'd give them wisdom and your intelligence, Lord, and guide them in their steps they're taking. So we pray this, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, it's been uh, great to, to hear God's word again. And we're going to sing a final song, which is one of my favorites, Amazing Grace, um, My Chains Are Gone. So fitting for this idea of God freeing us from our slavery of sin and links to this, the message and to Kev's story as well. So let's sing this song. Let's praise God and God bless for this week. Stay safe and take care. God bless.
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever.
Sing 